Hi YouTube. What I have in my hands is an Apple phone, uh, which is running iOS 17. Now, I'm sure you have not seen uh, this kind of an interface on an Apple device with these large uh, icons, and you're probably thinking this is a Android device or something, but you know, this is an iPhone 13, and um, you know, it's this interface is unique. And um, you know, what this is really uh, designed to do is to help those people who have, you know, young family members, um, I'm talking about a seven, eight year old, for example, or maybe an aging parent who are not comfortable uh, in using these devices. So in case of a child, you might want them to have a phone, but you're concerned about exposing them to online risks uh, and, you know, being able to communicate with people you don't want them to communicate with, something like that. Um, so this feature is gonna help you break that barrier. Um, so you're safely able to, you know, give your child a phone so you can be in touch with them or maybe only close family members can be in touch, uh, but not not anybody else. Or in the case of an aging parent, you don't want them to feel intimidated by a device of this nature simply because it puts a lot of cognitive load on their mind. You know, they want a simpler interface, uh, which they can just go to use the the you know most used features um and that's it right uh and and just makes the whole process really really simple and so that's what this video is going to talk about how do you set up a an ios phone uh, especially ios 17 device it could be any kind of a apple phone it could be a 13 14 or 15 pro whatever you have um and makes it you know appear like this uh and you can you know then solve that problem so Watch the rest of the video to see how you can set this up for yourself. Okay, so to set this up, we'll go to settings. And within settings, you're gonna find a feature called accessibility. And if you click on that, you will see that there is a feature down below at the very bottom called assistive access. And that's really what we are looking for. So within assistive access, if you click on it, you're gonna find a, you know, basically, since I've already set this up, uh, it's a little bit of a different interface, but basically this is what you're gonna find. It's gonna help you configure and set up assistive access. And in there, you're gonna find these two options, rows and grid. So it's uh, two ways you can set this up. Uh, rows actually works better for folks who want to, you know, who can read text and they're okay with that. But if you want a more icon driven interface, so like for kids, this works ideal, uh, you can use the grid view and you'll see those fat icons I was showing you at the beginning of the video. So you can set that up. You can then uh, start configuring the app. So if I go into manage apps, this is the kind of interface you'll see at the, at the, at the top. Uh, obviously I've added a bunch of apps, which are my selected apps, as you see at the top there. And then down below, there are some apps which I've already actually put in my selected apps from the optimized for assistive access. Uh, so that includes stuff like calls, camera, messages, photos. Uh, this other stuff, Pandora, Mail, and Nest, is what I added separately uh, in my use case. So you can then, you know, basically any apps that you have on your phone, you can add onto uh, that interface uh, by default. All the other apps that are running on your phone are not going to be visible under assistive access. So that's what you got to do. Uh, pick whatever you want, and then individually, you can start configuring things. So... Okay, so to set up individual apps, we'll go hit the back button and come to the list of the apps that we have uh, identified to be made available. Um, we'll assume for this use case that uh, we are setting the phone up for a child and um, you know, obviously we won't set up things such as Nest or maybe even Mail. Um, so we'll just go through some of the basic stuff here. So let's assume you're setting up the calls and so now, you know, who can the child receive phone calls from and make phone calls to? So you can restrict that. So either you can say they can receive phone calls only from designated people or everyone, right? However you want to set it up, whatever you feel safe with. And then, like in this case, I've set it up for mom, right? So that's the only person that they can actually make a phone call to. And you can even restrict whether they have access to the dialer keypad, which is enabling them to place phone calls to anybody. And so if you switch this off, they can't really do that because you know all they are restricted to is uh, what you have enabled here. Um, and there's some further control at the bottom. 
You can do the same thing with messages. So if I click on messages, you see a similar interface. You can set up, you know, designated people that they can receive or send the messages to. And then you can you can fine tune this further, you know, depending on your preferences. And then, you know, if you look at a quick uh, look at the photos, you can include the shared albums if you so choose or or not, you know, uh, and then act, you know, control over the camera. So you can either say they can take pictures from the front camera or the rear camera and or they can make videos from either camera. So you can control that. So it gives you a lot of control over or at least some control uh, over how these apps are going to behave. Obviously, what this also does is that the total feature set that is available for that app is toned down drastically. Right. So they are only able to do certain things and that, you know, will obviously dumb it down to to an extent where it, it's uh, again, not uh, a big cognitive load on the child and uh, also gives you a element of security. At the bottom here, you find certain other features that gives you more control over the, the you know, how it's going to appear, the, that interface. Uh, so you can add a wallpaper if you want. You can enable or disable access to the volume buttons, which is this stuff on the left. Uh, so you can set it up at a certain volume and then turn this off. So now they can't really, you know, um, mess around with the volume buttons. Same thing goes with the silent mode and some of the other features as you see here. And then you can also enable or disable Siri uh, so that they, you know, cannot necessarily bypass all your controls just because they have access to Siri. Uh, so you can turn this off and uh, now the phone will only be able to do those things that you have set up. So next, let's see how to uh, actually make that feature available, how you turn and turn it off. Uh, it is all password controlled. So if I come here at the bottom, you will see passcode settings. Um, you do have to set up a certain passcode, which is going to, um, you know, basically allow the person to either go in or go out of that interface. And that's what that's for. So, so after you have done the setting of the individual applications that you want on that interface, the next thing you want to do is make that feature easily accessible so you can turn off that type of an interface and turn this back on uh, quickly. To do that, you want that in the control center. So let's take a look how to do that. So if you click on control center under settings, you'll find that there are two um, sections here, included controls and more controls. So by default, the accessibility shortcut is going to be under more controls. You want to include that in your included controls. And when you do that, basically what's going to happen is if I click here, you'll see the icon for accessibility appear, right? So if I, and that's because I have included it. So that's really what you want. And, uh, you know, so once you have set that up and let's say my phone is under normal mode to invoke that type of an interface. So let's say I'm going to hand this over to my child. I'll simply right click. I'll hit the accessibility icon provide a password and instantly the phone almost reboots and is entering assistive access as you see. So now it's going from the normal mode into this child-friendly mode that we have just set up. So as you can see, it says triple click to exit access to assistive access. And this is where you start seeing those fat icons, right? So obviously you have two types of interfaces as I showed you earlier, the icon based or text based, however you want to set it up. But basically, it's going to allow you, and, and we can see for calls, all the child can do is make phone calls to their mom. That's it. And you also see this big back button appear everywhere. Um, that's the only way you can really navigate. Uh, for the camera, also, you can, you know, see, you know, however you configured it, since I configured or enabled all of it, and that's what you see. So if I want to take a picture, I can come here, maybe, you know, picture, take a picture of this, this knife here. So if I click on this, uh, now it enables me to, to take a picture and I can hit take a photo. And uh, now that photo has been taken and I have to hit the back button um, and, and, you know, so forth. And then, of course, I can see the, the various pictures I might have taken. Um, and then, you know, the rest of the features uh, are basically going to appear uh, according to how you have configured it. So. Now to get back from this mode, oh, by the way, I want to also show since I did turn on the volume or kept the volume button control access, uh, this appears r rather large as well, right? So however I, I, I set up the volume, it's going to appear in that, in that, you know, changed format. 
So now getting back to the original uh, interface or the normal iOS interface, I should say, all I have to do is triple click on here. So I'm gonna do one, two, three. And when I do that, it gives me this list. Either I can reach into settings, emergency, or exit access, assistive access. So I'm gonna click on it. And it's gonna ask me for my password. And I enter the password and it's going to now invoke uh, the normal interface again. You know, so obviously um, you, the phone still is, you know, relying on the Apple ID and the phone is pre-configured. All you're really doing is uh, invoking that assistive access. And the password that I'm typing in now is actually not the password for the lock of my phone. That's not what that password is for. That password is basically for, you know, meant to um, start the, that, assistive access feature. So you're setting up passwords in two ways. First is for the, the Apple ID or the phone itself. And the other one is just for that type of access. And that's what the password I was punching in earlier is for. So I also wanted to show you what the, you know, the phone is going to look like if you set up the it by rows rather than those fat icons. And this is what you'll see. So it depends on how you want to set it up. You know, both are possible um, and it's just a, a different layout. Okay, so I hope the video helped you uh, to kind of understand how to leverage or use a regular Apple device and make it a little bit more user-friendly or make it a little bit safer for your child or make it you know, more accessible to a senior, uh, depending on your application. Um, and that was really the point of this video to kind of show you the possibilities. If uh, uh, you have the situation, hopefully this video helps you out. And if it did, uh, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good day. Bye-bye.